What's going on, everybody? Man, um, really appreciate all the support from the um, FBA from America. So my goal is to try and uh, build a bridge between, you know, us and Polynesia and Polynesians with Black Americans. Because, you know, we we, we understand uh, when we look back at Black history that uh, uh, many great things done. And when we were growing up, we just we just bear witness so much greatness, and then when you know when we start hearing things like Fat Joe said fifty fifty, uh, with hip hop creation, and that's crazy to us because we 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 always knew that it was created by Black Americans, um, and um, Tariq Nasheed's movie is coming out. Um, microphone check the hidden history of hip hop, and I did donate. You know, I, I checked um, I checked a hundred dollars on there. Um, yeah, and I wanted to, everyone to stand on their square when they said it was fifty fifty. When this when they said it was fifty fifty, I want everyone to stand on their square, and I want them to point to all the pioneers that they said that were pioneers. I want them to stand on it because they're saying it was fifty fifty between Latinos and Black Americans. And I want to once this documentary comes out, I want them to stand on their square, and I want them to to stand on their square and represent the lies that they've been telling, because <coughs> it's going to be. It's going to be a great movie, man. I know it's going to be great when I watch it. Or oh, hopefully it comes out in the movies. Man, I'd even try and um, try and um, look at theaters in my country, in New Zealand, to try and see if we can even get it here. Um, so yeah, I donated my money to it. Uh, checked the hundred on it. Uh, you know, it's not much, but you know, it's what I can right now. And when you when you do send your money and you do get this. Um, you do get a message from the Melanoid Nation, and I hope I did the on. Oh, no, yeah, I went to Tariq's um, YouTube page and I um, donated that my money there. So it's it's saying it's still got a little way to go. It's only three days to go. So so if anyone man, if anyone's out there that hasn't donated to the to the um, um, to the Kickstarter. You just got to go to Tariq Nasheed's page and in, in the comment section, um, in the um, underneath it, it'll have the link to it. So I donated to the history, uh, Hidden History Museum, and I'm proud of that. And I only didn't donate a little bit of money, but it was to donate to get your name on their board. Like all the don, all the all the donors, there were <laughs> some FBA all the way, FBA all the way every day. We we uh, we know. We know that FBA created hip hop. All those other genres like blues, R and B, jazz, funk, even rock and roll. What was that dude's name? I think it was Chuck Berry. Um, most genres of music was created by FBA. It's just there's no way around it. Hip hop cannot just come out of the blue. You cannot you cannot just come out of the blue and create hip hop. All these other genres. Um, so if the pioneers created all these other music genres, it only makes sense, even without any evidence, it only makes sense that the FBA created hip hop. There was no sharing. The only way you could be a pioneer is if you created one of the elements of hip hop. If you didn't create an element of hip hop, you're not a pioneer. It's just truth. And when Fat Joe said it was 50-50, it's just not true at all. I mean, look at all the music we used to grow up when we were little. Man, Whitney Houston, Stevie Wonder. Oh man, where do we start? Smokey Robinson, Marvin Gaye, uh, The Temptations, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. I mean, just goes on forever and ever. Um, um, and I know when you, when you look at blues, because blues wasn't as popular or what as it was probably in the seventies and sixties, but still, um, it's still a hip hop is still. A, to me, a transgression uh, evolution of music all the way. So, you know, it's it's just, uh, uh, it's just, uh, I'm just clueless of, of how they can say that anybody else was pioneers besides the FBA. And I think the most important thing to black people in America, I just want to add my five cents, but to me, this is my own opinion, but the most important thing to black Americans now, especially FBA, 
is reparations. And according to Dr. Claude Anderson, you know, that's someone that I've been watching for the last few years. We used to watch a lot of Farrakhan clips too. You know, I mean, Farrakhan used to say some heavy things if you weren't really uh, knowing, uh, knowing what they were talking about. I mean, Khalid Muhammad said some, you know, some people would say harsh things, but to me, it's just, I, I love it, you know. And um, yeah, Dr. Claude Anderson, if, if, um, if you could watch the amount of knowledge that this dude has and the work that he's put in for his people, it's, uh, it's amazing, it's, um, it's inspiring. And the amount that Dr. Claude Anderson has put is, I think it was 20 trillion to 60 trillion. Now, the reason why they don't want to give reparations is because they don't want to repair anything. They want to keep things the way it is, the way it, the way that the dominant society has structured things. This is how they want to keep it. This is why you have these race soldiers all over America doing what they do because that's their job, you know. Um, reparations is probably the most important thing uh to, and this is my point of view uh reparations is the most important thing to black people in america um because it's not because the money is deserved or it's because if it's a handout it's because it's owed um you can understand that the whole cotton industry was an industry a lot of money and we're talking billions trillions of dollars was made from that industry slave labor free slave labor where black americans got paid nothing absolutely nothing um all the wealth that was generated from slavery these the people that the dominant society that was able to keep all the money well they were able to keep that money within their families they were able to grow their wealth they were able to keep the wealth inside the society all the people in the dominant society was able to benefit from that money and no one was punished no one was stripped of their money there are people today who are still living off the wealth from slavery because it was generated many years ago those people that generated that money were able to build companies to build industries um i mean they paid black people nothing, absolutely nothing. And I just got an update from D Tubman, which says just three days to get codified fam. Donate to the microphone check.com Kickstarter today. Yes, donate, donate. I've donated my money. Um, I wish we had more money to give, but I think um, what I'm making now, I think that's a reasonable amount, but you know, I really want uh to see i just want to see that movie because i want to dispel all these myths that everybody's having i mean they had these uh i think there was one um one thing i saw where they were saying that people were bring flannel shirts and riding around in hydraulics and now they're part of the hip-hop culture and they're, they're creators of hip-hop culture i mean they keep moving the goalpost they keep moving it because they know deep down they didn't create it. You weren't pioneers. You're only a pioneer if you created the elements. If you participated, you participated, but you participated for your own benefit. You didn't create anything new. You just took what was created and you made any benefit, made it benefit yourself. Now people are trying to say, well, it's 50-50 and it'll never be 50-50. That's a joke. That's a complete joke. That's why they're parading Fat Joe everywhere. Like Fat Joe, I don't reckon he's a bad person. I don't think he's a bad person, but he's definitely a liar you know and um you know as a person i think he's you know i knew i know he he must have had some street connections back in the day but that doesn't mean anything to me because if you're just living off lie you're living off a lie you know no matter how much you try and um push this agenda that's why they're putting him out the, the bet awards man he looked out of place to the max he looked like he didn't even belong there you know i mean he's got a couple of good songs and all that but man that doesn't mean anything to me um, I mean, Busta Rhymes, that's, that's another dude that I really liked his music back in the day. Now I'm looking at his music like, you know, I, I'm looking at his music funny now. <coughs> but as I was saying, you know, especially when they bring up Cool Herc and that, what well, they, as the founding fathers, whether they didn't, they weren't playing Jamaican music 
at those parties in, in America. See, when they were playing their music, uh, they had to play what the people wanted to hear. And people wanted to hear the breakbeats, but breakbeats of what? See, funk music, another Black American, foundational Black American creation, just like jazz, just like blues, just like gospel, um, just like R&B, just like every other genre that you to get to hip hop, but you had to be able to pioneer all these other different strands or types of music to be able to get to this spot where we are today. I mean, you got one of the the the, the greatest music, uh, the greatest entertainers on earth was Michael Jackson, which if you really research Michael Jackson, you know that all that um, talk about him being a pedophile and all that was all lies. The FBI, they were uh, monitoring him for ten years. For 10 years and then the fbi or the feds they want to come get you they'll come get you all they need is a little bit of evidence to tear your name down they have no evidence that's why when it went to court michael jackson was michael jackson was found innocent you know i mean once you're found innocent you're innocent the same thing goes with bill cosby i'm not trying to stand up for bill cosby and what he did but i want to see the evidence of what they did you know you can't just um tear them down in the media, you know, you really got to be able to prove that he was guilty. That's why he was proven innocent. That's why a lot of these, um, whenever they have a black person, they're always trying to put him as the face of something. So they, it's a full uh, Bill Cosby. They're trying to put black people as the face of rape. You know, even though the dominant society have been raping for uh, since since way when way back then. Um, Black Americans have had a great influence on us down here. And um, um, when you really learn about black history, I mean, they've been fighting. I mean, there was a dude named John Horse. Um, um, man, there's just so many things. And I will definitely um, go into detail of more of these things that I'm saying. Reparations is the most important thing I think for black Americans right now, because they should be able to get the money that they are, that it's owed to them. I mean, 40 acres in the mule never happened. Um, there was, I think there was a thing called the Homestead Act where uh, people were getting free land in America and people would come from other places and they would come to America and get free land. Any information you want on slavery, go to Dr. Claude Anderson, great mind, uh, extremely intelligent mind. And as many, I mean, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, I mean, uh, you know, rest in peace to her. Uh, revolutionary minded and revolutionary minded people is what I'm attracted to because the truth has to come out. The truth has to come out one way or another, you know. Um, there was no uh, amendments made for slavery and what happened um, to the enslaved. They're trying to say it's 400 years ago when you can even ask black people and they have a grandmother who was born slaves. So these are just WS talking points, you know? And um, I know one thing on Tariq Nasheed's um, TikTok, oh, I mean, um, Twitter, he was playing. So let me just try and put this on, see if you can hear it. Um, as an American, um, as an American, not as an African. Why is it that there's always a reminder of slaverism with American black people, especially? What? So this, let's, let's go back. Let's go back. Um, as an American, not as an African. Why is it that there's always a reminder of slaverism with American black people, especially? What? Why is there always a reminder? Because there was no justice to the injustices that were caused. They haven't forgotten. Why would they just walk away and forget something that was absolutely disgusting that happened to my people? If that happened to my people, why would I just forget? Why would I just pull put my head up and why would I why would I why would you just just put your head up and just move on? Here? Why not why not make people pay for what they've done? So let's carry on. It flubbed. This we're talking about 400 years ago, and because of it, Black Americans come out to other countries with that brainwash system, feeling that brainwash system. Can you just? We're just gonna have to listen to it again. 
um, as an American, not as an African. Why is it that there's always a reminder of slaverism with American black people, especially? Why is it? Slaverism too, man. Uh, this this person. So this is what the person looks like, okay? Plugged. This we're talking about four hundred years ago, and because of it, Black Americans come out to other countries with that brainwash system, feeling that. See, this is the problem. This is the problem. This person is mentally deranged, and she has a colonized mindset. Never forget that the mind is colonized. The physical was. It's just a walking sausage. Is that there's nothing in there? There's nothing in there. You gonna say it happened four hundred years ago? So we're just supposed to forget? <laughs> it didn't happen four hundred years ago. Let's just make this. Just get that straight. It happened for hundreds of years, okay? And people were still in slaves. People, there's black people in America who have grandparents that were born slaves. But they don't want to know the fact. They don't know the fact. This is why they bring it up. So I, I'm looking at this backwards. So I got to like. Just because someone else has a different color or calls you a black sister or calls you the N word, there's something wrong. Why? It's a brainwash system that. No, there is something wrong because there's a lot of history with that word. You, They use that word as a derogatory to return for a long time they still use it to this day don't even forget that they still use it to this day so this person is delusional you understand this person is a crazy person and walks around with a colonized mindset it's, it's a sausage it's a sausage walk around and this is an enemy has been programmed into the black americans so when you guys when you when americans come out or oh, they want to talk about the South Koreans. Okay, take for example the Mermaid film. Okay, it, mermaid. like hello, what is there to have a black mermaid there? No. I should be down to the mermaid film, and she's saying that black Americans have a have a what is it brainwashed. This person is brainwashed. This is Candace Owens one hundred and one. This is Larry Alda. This is Larry Alda's little sister. You know what I mean? This is how they speak. This is how they think. This person should look at their own homeland and then start talking against people who have built one of the greatest countries to ever exist, which is America. Um, as an American, not as an African. Why is it that there's always a reminder of slaverism with American black people especially why is it that there's always a reminder of slaverism with american black people especially why is it flogged this we're talking about 400 years ago and because of it black americans come out to other countries with that brainwash system feeling that brainwashed they're saying that black americans are brainwashed for trying to rectify what happened in history when they're too scared to even look back in history and change things in the way it is now because they're so colonized and destroyed beyond sanity that they start talking like this so larry larry alda's little sister is talking like this there are a lot of people walking like this walking around like this i mean you can look at the words they i think that was in like words like akata Jaria, you know, derogatory terms against um, against black people. Now, this person was raised up in Chicago, but she's from Africa, but she was raised in, in, in Chicago. So this is technically what black Americans would call a tailor, is what I understand. This is a new word. It's a profound word. <laughs> it's an excellent word to describe how these people think with these colonized mindsets. You understand what this girl is talking about? She fled her country to go to America, black, a country built by black Americans because it was built off the hands, feet, sweat, blood, and tears of foundational black Americans. This is, that's what America is. 
you have to go to Dr. Claude Anderson. Uh, Dr. Claude Anderson, watch all his videos. I think his books are called uh, Black uh, something White Wealth. White Wealth Black. Oh, I can't remember it, man. I should have bought it. I can't remember it. But if you want to check it out, check out Dr. Claude Anderson. This dude is intelligent, highly intelligent, brilliant mind. He's getting old now, so he's not really going to uh, travel as much. But I, I would like to interview that dude one day. You know, And to me, he's like, an, he's a role model. He, he's a he's an icon. He's a legend. You know, people that wouldn't, wouldn't have heard, you've heard of the Malcolm X's, the Martin Luther King's, of course. But as you know, Martin Luther King was pushing for reparations. They're always going to try and bring up the peaceful Martin Luther King and say, but they're not going to talk about Martin Luther King or wanted reparations. And reparations is the key. Reparations is a must. Reparations is and will be given. Um, um, I mean, there was a whole industry, as I was saying before, and all the wealth that was generated, the people were able to keep it. They were not. The wealth was not taken from them. The wealth was not stripped from them. Everyone that was made wealthy from slavery was able to keep all that money and benefit them as a society to create more industry, to create more wealth, to spread the wealth and keep the wealth in the dominant society is what they did. And they keep all the black people out. They never paid back black people one cent. You understand? 40 acres in the mule never came. Free land was given. I think it was the Homestead Act, as I said before, was given out to people coming from overseas. Free land. So let's just carry on with this. Just because someone else has a different color or calls you a black sister or calls you the N-word, there's something wrong. Why? It's a brainwash system that has been programmed into the black Americans. So when you See, brainwash system programmed into the black Americans, it's not programmed into them. This is what was done to them. You know, that's why they're facing the facts. They're seeing what was done to them. And now they're trying to rectify the problems. You, this person, Larry Alders, this is the, that's the person who doesn't want to rectify things. They want to run away, which is why she fled. She fled to Chicago of all places. And she's talking bad about black Americans. She fled to the exact country that, would, that they built. Guys, when, you, when Americans come out, or they want to talk about the South Koreans. Okay, take, for example, the mermaid film. Okay. It, mermaid. Like, hello, what is there to have a black mermaid there? No, something is wrong. Americans are always complaining about racism, racism, racism. Stop talking about racism. And see back again. Let's see what she has to say. This kid is Owen's niece. Has been programmed into the black Americans. So when you guys, when you, when Americans come out or they want to talk about the South Koreans, okay, take for example the mermaid film. Okay. It, like, hello, what is there to have a black mermaid there? No, something is wrong. Americans are always complaining about racism, racism, racism. Stop talking about racism and the racism won't be there. The mindset. So her solution to racism, oppression, murder, death, hanging, decapitation, killing destroying whole families kidnapping uh um uh, whole families uh raping men raping women raping children buck breaking people enslaving people destroying whole families her solution was to stop talking about it and that's what's going to solve it this is a true coward This is one of the greatest colonized mindsets. And uh, if you stop talking about racism, it won't be there. That's delusional. They have all this wealth, all this money generated from racism. And you're going to say the solution to it is to stop talking about it. And it's just, it, she's not the only one that. It thinks like this. She's not the only one that thinks like this. It's mainly like this. Where do these people come from? <laughs> so, colonized mindsets, man. I'm telling you. This is colonized mindsets. Scared to death to face the truth. Scared to death. Scared to look. There ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. 
<laughs> but you know what I mean? It's because like these people like this, man. I don't know, man. Are they black, man? Are they? What are they, man? Because this seems like a biggest coward talk I've ever heard. How are you going to stop racism by just stop talking about it? When you got this whole system of oppression that's been designed by a dominant society. A whole system. Global. Globally. Kids <sighs> from America to come into South Korea, to come into an Asian country. Why is it different for... I'm wearing the shoes of an American. As an American, I would promote there is racism, whether anyone likes it or not. But as an African, I don't recognize that. I just... That's what I mean, man. People like this, the mindset to run away to a person that you're saying should stop talking about racism. You're saying this. Per, you're saying black Americans are, are brainwashed, a brainwashed mentality. You, you're going to run to their country, the country that they built the wealth, because America was built from slavery. America was built by black Americans. You just have to get that into your head. I, and, 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 and it just behooves me. You know what I mean? It behooves me to even think that there are people like this out there. And there's many of them. And then when I see them talking down about black Americans, I'm like, well, why don't we turn around and have a look at you? Why don't we turn around and have a look at your country? You're trying to talk down to black Americans. Why don't we talk about your country and how well, what your country look like? Uh, are there people uh, uh, t t t going to the toilet in the streets? You know, are they doing um, are they doing uh, all types of diff uh, eating all these different types of animals and all this savagery? And they're trying to call black Americans having brainwashed. What she say? Watch the media as an American, not as an African. And why is it that there's always a reminder of slaverism with American black people, especially? Why is it flogged? This, we're talking about 400 years ago. And because of it, black Americans come out to other countries with that brainwash system, feeling- Brainwash system. Oh God, man. This person is brainwashed, lost, coward, flea bag, and um, there's people like this all over the planet. To be honest, man, shame. Shame on you. But, you know, looking up to the, looking forward to that new movie, it's going to be, it's going to be probably one of the most important movies, especially if you grew up with hip hop. We grew up with hip hop. We grew up with many genres, many black artists um, that gave us the feeling and the soul and the purpose and, helped us through a lot of uh a, a lot of problems in our life because the music was so great and now you got people saying that they had they, they created flannel shirts and, and low riders oh we created the flannel we created it therefore we created hip-hop you know it's like you created the shirts now we created flannel And let's just keep moving the goalposts. They'll keep moving the goalposts until they've totally erased black Americans from the picture. It's crazy to me. Anyway, hopefully uh, in that movie, uh, Fat Joe comes out again and um, he stands on the square. And all of you who said that black Americans weren't the pioneers or wasn't hip-hop wasn't pioneer uh, by by black americans especially foundational black americans i hope you get a big slap in the face because i used to love buster rhymes music i loved i loved his music now i know he wasn't what he was well, what he is what he was what he was saying he was and a lot of people coming out well we're we're from uh, we're from madagascar now <laughs> from madagascar i would i would you were from I thought you from America. I thought you. I thought your family, your descendants, because you know FBA is a lineage. It's not a group. Um, it's not a. You can't join it. 
it's a lineage you know it's a lineage and people are just gonna have to get used to it and get used to the notion that they are going to get their reparations because everyone else got their reparations and especially coming with that israel palestine conflict if i was you black americans stay out of it <laughs> they're trying to pull you one and then so they can blame it on you i've seen some messages on um uh on uh twitter they're trying to say oh man why are black americans why are they so quiet why don't they why don't they come out and speak why don't they do something why don't they why don't they bring up who, who if they bring up whoever whichever side they're going to be on the other people are going to get at them oh they with israel i'm going to get them oh we stand with palestine and they're going to get them they're going to tear them down they're just looking for someone to tear down so when it comes to the israel palestine conflict of course we want peace of course we don't want to see children and all that killed but if i was you i would stay out of it, it doesn't even involve you where were you where were they when you were going through what you were going through i mean i saw that the images of hamas killing those you know children and women as extremely cowardly and if you're trying to run win a propaganda war you went around about it the wrong way but i even i don't have opinion on it they haven't been there to come and help me so why should i be going out to go to help them so i'm saying to black americans just stay out of it man because they, they're going to use you they're always going to use you as a target you understand they're always trying to get you to say something once you say something your career is destroyed they're going to destroy you like they're saying why are the black americans why aren't they talking about us why aren't they helping us why aren't they this when every time it comes a situation comes up they always try and find a way to grab black americans and and make it look like it's their fault and then they put them as the poster boy of destruction so that so it's all their fault but if i was them i would stay out of it don't even have an opinion about it trying to act like they came out and trying to help you all these years. I never heard them speaking about you. I, I've never heard no nothing against Palestinian Israelis. What's going on is terrible. I've never heard them come come out and say in support of reparations. If there has been some, cool. That's good. Because reparations is the most important thing that I think for black Americans right now, I think it's the most important thing. But um yeah, it was Israel Palestinian. I mean, that was cowardly what Hamas did. You know what I mean? I'm just saying it's a, but you know, I'm not gonna take a side because now Palestinian children seem to be dying and getting killed. You know, why can't these people just aim at each other, soldiers versus soldiers? You can attack children, women, and that's that's not how you fight. That's like, that's how a coward fights. I don't care what side it is on. You know, why not just soldiers just fight? You know, they don't have to kill children and women and when I saw that what Hamas did, I, I just I was just thinking, what was going through their head at that time? I mean, did they did they, did they think there was going to be a response? I'm just trying to think, but at the same time, I'm staying out of it. You know, I don't support no one. You don't support me. You don't support me and talk about my problems. You know, if I don't find out that, you know, if I don't find it worth my time, I'm not going to even have an opinion about it because they're going to try and whenever you have to choose one side. You know, they're going to be demonized for whatever side you choose. But uh, on that note, you know, it's sad what's happening, you know. If, if innocent people die, it's always going to be sad. It's always going to be wrong if innocent people die. The soldiers die all well, while you in the military is what's expected to happen if you join, you know, from on both sides. And I'm not going to choose a side, man. You know, if Palestinians are oppressed, they're trying to end this in that oppression if israelis are getting attacked and this in that attack i don't know i don't know i'm not an expert over there you know i just hope things get better over there i wish them all the best and i wish them health and wealth you know what i mean but stop trying to pull other people down just to try and okay i'm just going to stay out of it that's it you know i'm not going to choose a side you know getting back to the to the microphone check um i donated my money hopefully everyone can donate their money i know Tariq's going to get to that goal he always he always gets to the goal hidden colors hidden history museum donate to that um he's people are trying to say he's a grifter when how can you be a grifter when everything you say you did you done and you did it uh and you, and and the outcome was the outcome that you said what what the what the money was for so if you fundraise for this he got it if you fundraise for that he got it if it was hidden history museum he got it 
see the thing is they're trying to say well we just took a million dollars no it was a million dollars that Tariq Nasheed raised right and then he put it his own million on top of that to purchase it and then they say what's well, too small what well, you go and purchase something out there in that in that uh, district and you're going to find if you don't have the right amount of money you're not going to get anywhere but I'm glad and I, I know my name will be on that wall because that's why I donated my money in history hidden hidden history museum I don't know where you put the names at but one day I want to go to wherever it is I think it's a man I can't even remember where it is man but hopefully one day I'll be able to go and see the museum and see my name on the wall wherever it is it's donors and um microphone check when it comes out I hope everyone there was saying 50 50 I hope you're still going to be there terror squad I hope you're still going to be there with your flag, yeah, you might have to have the FBA flag now after that movie comes out. Mm -hmm. The true pioneers, FBA. Thank you to all the FBA people that have come into my channel and commented, loving my other videos, man. I was just speaking, and I always just speak straight off the top of my mind. Later on, maybe I might get into more um, if it becomes into a zone where I find I'm um, lacking some education on a few things, and I'll try and go through that and try and come with different topics. But what I'm speaking on is just coming straight off my mind, what I've been learning about. All I need to go and if I want to learn anything about slavery, is just go to Dr. Claude Anderson. That's that's all I have to say. That's the person that you need to see, see his interviews, and learn about all the information you need to uh, to find out about. If you were inspired by the Black Americans like I was, if you see them as great revolutionaries great fighters, uh, never surrendered, never gave up, uh, John Horse ancestor, <laughs> living in that swamp, you know, giving dumb in society hell. You know, this is the people that did it, <laughs> you know. And, and I don't know why people are trying to view, take them out of history, but it's just the common tactic of the dumb in society is what they've always done. Take out the black people, take out, take out any, any remnants, you know, because back in slavery, when slavery was around all the patents that the people used to have for all these inventions and that those were stolen you know a lot of inventions back then because slaves weren't allowed to create anything but they would take the inventions from the from the from the slaves that were creators the great innovators and then they would take that patent and then they would patent it themselves and then keep all the money and keep all the wealth and once again it just goes on and on and on keep the wealth keep and then they then they turn then they turn the lens back on you and say, why are you like this? Why are you lazy? Why are you? See, they steal everything, and then they try to turn it on them. You know what I mean? When we know, well, I know that Black Americans created uh, hip hop, just like they created R and B, just like they created blues, just like they created jazz, just like they created gospel, just with this and that and this and that, and now all of a sudden you're 50-50. For the ghost who never existed. <sighs> you went there. You weren't there. We weren't looking for you. You extras with the 50-50. Only black Americans was there. There were some other people that came wrong, but they were outcasts from their society, weren't they? That's why they were with the black Americans, because they're outcasts from theirs. Because then you would have heard, you heard the cha-chas and you know all these other different instruments music accents but the accent was black american we know it they know it we know it everybody knows it but it's because they have a colonized mindset jealous hateful and then and just like the fbi back in the 60s they don't want to see the rise of a black messiah just like nixon how he said it you know and this is that's the rule and that's the code they stick to and um so everything that I'm talking about is just things that I've learned. I want to go into things in more detail in the future because I just want to, um, you know, just say that uh, Polynesians down here really appreciate Black Americans, man. And, you know, we see what they've done. And reparations all the way, every day, for descendants of slavery. I don't know how they can have all these reparations meetings and then they don't have people who were foundation black Americans. I, I just, that doesn't make sense to me, but it makes sense to me though, because they're trying to, they're trying to, um, 
they're trying to confuse everybody because these people are not foundation of black americans but they, they give they yet they're going to a reparations um meeting about reparations that doesn't even involve them that's why they're there to make sure it doesn't go to black americans i bet you i bet you that's why they have these reparations meetings that no one knows about i saw this other one that no one turned up to yet Tariq and uh I think Tariq's going to have another march or something, man. And I was thinking, man, what if we did that in New Zealand at the same time they were doing it in America? We put on one here for them as like an honor to pay homage to them for what for all the stuff that they've done for us, because it's not it's not it's what they've done to us internally in our soul. That's why we look at them the way we look at them, because when it touches you inside. It's different. It's a whole different feeling than someone just coming to tell you, okay, you can just read this two divided by one, nine divided by six, and then you got foundation of black Americans. No, it wasn't like that. You know what I mean? It was it was it was it was a spirit. It was a spirit and inside our spirit started feeling something. We started hearing Whitney Houston, we started hearing I don't know, Barry White, or Marvin Gaye, uh, who else it's just too much reason. Michael Jackson. I mean, all the way since he was young, you know, a little kid, Jackson Five. You know, Tito Jackson, Jermaine, hater, <laughs> no, but you know, we, <laughs> you know, we grew up with all these greats and all this great music, all this great black music, man, and now all of a sudden Michael Jackson is Haitian, now all of a sudden Barry White is Jamaican, now everybody, everybody else is from Barbados, is from Madagascar, is from from everybody he's just from everywhere else except where the music came from where the true pioneers came from and it's time for everyone to pay homage to them please because you're going to look like a fool once the documentaries come out it's just like to read what's up alma dixon cider what's up when all these different funky blue stuff oh fba brother in the house fba all the way yes much power to you man man i appreciate you Man, that's, this is why I'm doing this, to appreciate you and your people. <laughs> you know, I'm going to hold you up. It's time for us to uh, just get in the way. Because if we just start talking about it, it's not going to be, it's just uh, talking about it. But now I want to stand in the way. I want to take them shots. You know, I, I'm I, I'm ready to take them shots because we can't just, just say great things about black Americans and then just move to the side once it starts getting hot. Now we've we got to be able to take them shots now. So I'm putting my, myself on the line to take them hits because you've done enough for me spiritually inside. So I'm uh, everything that I was taught, everything that I learned, um, I think it came from the Farrakhan speeches. That was the first things that I heard when I was younger. So when I was about eight years old, I think I've watched that movie Malcolm X. That's what first I started thinking about because we started listening to black music as young young kids, Jackson Five, really young kids. I mean we used to watch the movie what was the five heartbeats. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I'm going off topic. I'm, I'm going all different places. But um yeah man that's It's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm gonna just keep going um, with these uh, videos, and um, man, much love to the FPA brothers and sisters. We respect you, uh, man. All my subscribers, I respect you as well. Much love. I will start making more clips to when you guys are awake, because I know everyone will be asleep. I'm not expecting to anybody of anybody to be on this live, but it seems like there were some people on this live, and that's cool. I'm going to keep talking the truth and I'm going to keep saying that 50 50 hip hop was no way in hell that can get the hell out of here. It was 100 0. FBA created it. So, and everybody else who said 50 50, they're going to take that, those L's when Michael French shit comes out. And I hope to get a screening in New Zealand. Somehow, I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go have a look in New Zealand to see if when Tariq screens that movie in America, if we can screen it down here. Or if I have to sneak into a theater and jack up some dude and then I play it while everyone's in the theater. They think they're going to watch The Mermaid. And then on comes 
Hidden colors. <laughs> that would be the greatest crime out. Go up there and hijack that that, that cinema. And then they're going to watch um, um, Lassie. And on comes microphone check to put all these busters in check. Much love to FBA. Peace.